let's come into the topic uh, related to the chapter energy conservation act 2001 and related uh, its policies so as far as this exam is concerned this chapter has you know you can score uh, that can be some questions can comes based on one kind of numerical one type of numerical is that that we will uh, understand apart from that there are many theories plus many mcqs there is uh, multiple choice questions let's uh, start the topic the government of india has enacted the this energy conservation act that to in year 2001 which is which provides a legal framework and some institutional arrangement and because of that there is a uh, creation of be there is bureau of energy efficiency which is a nodal agency at the center as well as there are state designated agency sds at state level like in our i am from gujarat so we have a jeda there is uh, gujarat energy development agency same way every state there is a uh, designated energy as far as this uh, act is concerned to implement those acts the mission of be is to develop the policy and strategies based on self regulation and market principle with the goal to reduce the energy intensity of our country so that it will help us as we have seen in the first uh, uh, copy general aspects of energy management it will help us to reduce the energy intensity the the cost what we are yeah you know incurring to get the energy from outside the country apart from that definitely it will improve there are many benefits to grow regarding selling features this act empowers the state and uh, central and state governments to facilitate and enforce efficient use of energy and its conservation which was amended in 2001 Uh, it notifies energy intensive industries those which consumes quite high energy like cement steel metal industry like aluminum uh, apart from that there is a fertilizer textile including railways and commercial buildings which includes hotels and airports as a designated consumers and prescribes energy consumption norms and standard to those designated consumers which was um, the act was amended in 2010 and in that amendment the expansion of designated consumers to uh, that was included the building as well as some appliances and equipment for standard and leveling in that amendment one more provision has been uh added a framework within which a savings of energy can be traded between two industries energy certificate can be gained and the pat cycle has been implemented from 2010 pat is nothing but it's a perform achieve and trade cycle we'll see in next slides in couple of slides to understand this act there are few definition needs to be understand the first it's a building building is it means any structure or erection or a part of a structure of erection where the connected load is somewhere around 100 kilowatt or the contract demand is 120 kva or any of it so any building have a connected load 100 kilowatt or we can say contract demand is 120 kva or above is known as a building and that's which is used for the commercial purpose designated agency it means an agency which coordinates regulates and enforce provision of this act within a state designated consumers are those who are using the energy either any user or class of users and they have energy intensive industries means energy consumption is quite high those are known as a designated consumer and under this law 
there are nine designated consumers that's as per the uh, our book but presently now few more has been added and it's touched to uh, you can say 14 but as far as our syllabus is concerned we should remember it's a nine designated consumers energy it's nothing but it means any form of energy either from fossil fuel nuclear hydroelectricity or electricity generated from the renewable source so that is known as the energy or if you are purchasing from the you know uh, discount uh, from greed energy audit it means it's a verification monitoring and analysis of use of energy that includes submission of technical report which contains some recommendations to improve the energy efficiency to improve the energy efficiency having some cost benefit analysis and action plan to reduce the total energy consumption so many times i have seen in the paper paper number 1 please uh, the definition has been asked and one of this is this energy audit please define the uh, uh, definition of energy audit so it's a verification monitoring and analysis the use of energy including submit the technical report and that technical report should contain recommendations to improve the energy efficiency with some cost benefit analysis so that's why we have to go for financial management also and action plan to reduce the energy consumption ecbc that is energy conservation building codes it's a norms uh, this was basically developed to deal with uh, rapidly uh, increasing energy consumptions in the commercial buildings so it, it means the norms and standards of energy consumption express in terms of per square meter of the area the so total energy consumptions per built up area that is known as energy performance index epi considering the use of that uh, considering the uh, use of that building and the location of that building the, uh, the zone basically so epi and ah EP, uh, a h epi will be found out and that will be that will be you know uh, uh, equated and based on that the rating of that building that is star one star two star three four five will be given energy consumption stand standards it means norms for process and energy consumption standards energy saving certificate it is the certificate issued to the designated consumers if they achieve or surpass the target what it has been given in uh, in the patch uh, patch scheme we'll see what is patch scheme is equipment or appliance it means any equipment or appliance which consumes generates or transmit or supplies any energy that includes any device that consumes any form of energy and produce a desired work that is a known as a equipment or appliance let's come straight over to the schemes of b there are few schemes which b has launched to make sure that this act can be implemented very well that is ecbc standard and leveling demand side management budget lamp yojana promoting the energy efficiency in smes industry define the designated consumers and certification of energy manager and energy auditor that's what this process what we are going through as i said ecbc was developed to deal with uh, rapidly increasing energy consumption in commercial building it sets some minimum energy efficiency uh, standards for uh, design and construction of the commercial building also it defines the norms of energy requirement per square meters of area considering the uh, climate region and based on that uh, two indices indexes that is epi and ah epi the rating will be given you can have a better uh, you know in depth discussions in book number 3 uh, chapter number 10 that specially there is a, a chapter on ecbc standard leveling as we know there is a wide variation in energy consumption 
of similar product but different manufacturer also the information of energy consumption is not readily available to the consumer consumer has to put lot of efforts to understand suppose if you see the earlier uh, you know uh, tv or something how much what it will consume we don't know we have to you know go through manual or some more details so this leads to continued manufacture and purchase of inefficient equipment as well as appliances so the objective of this program is to provide information to the consumer about energy saving and to ensure that only energy efficient equipment as well as appliances would be made available to the consumer the presently uh, equipment which are under mandatory labeling program are uh, post free refrigerator then there is a tube light tfl then there is a uh, room air conditioners and distributor uh, distribution transformer Uh, the uh, necessary you know uh, star rating will be given star 1 to star 5 star 1 is the least energy efficient star 5 is the most energy efficient apart from star they have to uh, uh, you know display how much units per year this equipment will consume so some units will be displayed uh, apart from this you know these are the mandatory uh, there are many which are uh, Uh, you can say voluntary labeling like uh, ceiling fan might be you have seen that ceiling fan has also star rating has started even nowadays uh, uh, water geyser laptop dg set washing machines uh, uh, the, the equipment which we are using in our domestic purpose they are also you know under this star and uh, labeling uh, program the third program <clears throat> is a demand side management it means it's a managing of demand for power by utilities or distribution company discoms among some or all its customer to meet the current and the future needs so dsm program results in energy and or demand reductions for example the demand curve can be shifted from peak to off peak hours thereby reducing the needs of buying some expensive imported power during peak hours as well as all the utilities those who are generating the power they want flat curve and that is the reason normally we have observed that in a peak hours the uh, uh, the load is quite high and in a non peak hour that is during night let's say as far as our gujarat is concerned the peak hours timing is normal time is uh, you know morning 6 to 10 then 6 to 10 am then 10 am to evening 6 o'clock it's a peak hours so you have to pay some extra uh, paisa extra rupees that is 45 paisa per unit then after uh, 6 pm to night 10 once again there is a normal hours and then from night to morning 6 o'clock uh, it's a non peak hours where the rebate will be given to the consumers in uh, uh, it's uh, somewhere around 40 uh, the the peak hours charge is 85 paisa more and the rebate is 45 paisa less compared to normal tariff so users has to manage their load curve in a better way to uh, take such benefits so definitely if you can you know uh, shift our load and the peak load can be reduced we can reduce the capital needs to generate the additional power capacity any pilot projects are undertaken by be and there's a good you know potentials to recover the uh, 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 this Uh, uh energy total power consumptions the next is bachat lamp yojana also uh, it is known as a save lamp scheme the objective is to replace the large scale replacement of inefficient incandescent bulb through cfl because we know that the incandescent bulb whatever the elements it will generate will consume somewhere around 60 watts 60 watts 
at the same time for the same illuminance level the cfl will consume somewhere around 15 to 18 watts and that's the reason government has launched this to provide the cfl to the uh, our households at a price similar to that in condensed bulbs because normally it's costly but government is providing at the same cost and the difference of this cost uh, that is the market price and what we are getting from, uh, from the government the difference is a, uh, the recovery of this cost difference is through cdm that is clean develop mechanisms uh, under cdm necessary advantage will be taken and that difference will be paid to the manufacturer of this cfl there is a sme program that is promoting energy efficiency in small and medium scale uh, enterprise it implemented to improve the energy performance in selected sme clusters that sme clusters like chemical uh, smaller cluster like uh, text uh, for, uh, small fertilizers chemical could be there parma is there you know the objective of such program is to accelerate the adoptions of energy efficient technologies and the practices chosen by sme cluster through knowledge sharing capacity building and development of innovative financial mechanisms the another one is the designated consumers the central government has notified nine energy intensive industry industries as a dc under the uh, act 2001 but presently it is 14 few more has been added that's commercial apart from this oh, few more has been added that is discom is there uh, commercial building is also there that is airport and hotels presently but as far as our syllabus is concerned there are nine industries that's thermal power station there is a fertilizer, there is a cement, iron and steel, chloralkali, aluminum, railways, textile, and pulp and paper. Now, these are the industries which are being included, but all the plant, let's say all the thermal plant will not be covered, and they will not be given as a they, they are not the DC. There is a limit. The power station which consumes. 30,000 MTOE, that is metric ton oil equivalent, and we know one MTOE is nothing but 10 raised to 7, that is 10 into 10 raised to 7 kilocalorie. If 30,000 metric ton MTOE is used per annum, that power, that plant will come under DC. For iron and steel, 30,000, for chloroalkali, 12,000, aluminum, 7,500, textile, 3,000, pulp and paper, 30,000. So you can find some numerical on this. You suppose there is a thermal power station which consumes so and so different types of energy. How much is the metric ton of oil equivalent and whether that comes under this, uh, as per the EC Act, whether that comes on, in DC as a designated consumer or not. So this is the one numerical which I have picked up from September 2018, paper number one, in a textile plant, the monthly energy consumption is 7 lakh kilowatt hour of electricity. 40 kL is the furnace oil having a specific gravity is 0.92. Now we know specific gravity 0.92 is nothing. It, it means the density of that furnace oil is 0.92 into reference. Reference is in this case it's a water. Water density is 1000. So 920 kg per meter cube is the density of that furnace oil. So 40 kL furnace oil for thermic fluid heater, 360 tons of coal of steam boiler, and 10 kL of HSD having specific gravity 0.885, that is 885 kg per meter cube for some material handling equipment. Apart from that, few data is added. So we know if it is given, that's good. If it is not given, please remember one kilowatt hour is 860 kL, that's kilocalorie. Watt is nothing but Joule per second. If you convert that Joule to kilocalorie and hour to uh, uh, so what is Joule per second and relation between hour and second, it is nothing but 3600 uh, seconds per hour divided by 4.187, which comes 859.8. So one kilowatt hour is 860 kilocalorie. 
If it is given, it's good. If it is not given, you have to remember. As far as this numerical is concerned. Throughout the exams. Then GCV of the coal is given 3450 kilocalorie per kg. GCV of the furnace oil 10,000. GCV of HLC 10,500. Uh, 1 kg of oil equivalent is also given. That is 10,000 kilocalories. That means 1 MT MTOE is 10 into 10 raised to 6. That is 10 raised to 7 kilocalories. Compute the energy consumption in terms of metric ton of oil equivalent, that is MTOE of the plant, and comment whether this textile plant qualify as a notified designated consumer under the Energy Consumption Act or not. So simple, we have to find, uh, in this case, we have to find the total energy consumed per annum. So we know per annum monthly energy consumption is 7 lakh kilowatt hour uh, electricity. So 7 lakh into convert to uh, kilocal, that is 860 into 12. Yeah, 7, 000, uh, 7 lakh into 860 plus 40 kL furnace oil multiplied by its uh, density at the specific variety, that is 0.92 and 920 kg per meter cube. If it is 40 kL, that means 40 into 10 raised to 3 into 0 0.92 that will give you kg and we know GCV of furnace oil is 10,000 so multiply by 10,000 will give you kilocalorie through furnace oil and 360 ton of coal that is 360 into 10 raised to uh, 360 into 1000 is a kg multiply by GCV of the coal that is 3450 will give you the kilocal consumed through coal 10 kL HSD, so 10 into 1000 is a liter, and we know 0.885 kg per liter, so multiply by 0.885 will give you the kg multiplied by specific gravity, that is HSD GCV is 10,500, so multiply by 10,500, this total will give you the consumptions in a month, and if I multiply by this by 12, it will give you the total metric oil uh, multiplied by 12 will give us the total energy consumptions and further divided by that 10 is to 7 is give you MTOE. So the answer is like this. 40,000 into 0.92 will be to furnace oil into 10,000 then electricity uh, coal into 3450 electricity into 860 and then there is a HSD so 10,000 into 0 0.885 to 10,500 divided by 10 raised to 7 is a ton, metric ton of oil equivalent per month. Multiplied by 12 will give you 2766. Now, this is less than 3000 MTO, which is a cutoff for textile. So, you have to remember the cutoff also. Okay, so uh, thermal power station, fertilizer, cement, iron, and pulp and paper, they are the giant energy intensive. For that, it's a 30,000. Next is chloroalkali 12,000, then there's aluminum 7,500, and the textile 3,000. Okay, so please remember this cutoff uh, also so that we can comment because here there's a, they ask whether this textile plant qualifies as a modified designated consumer or not. So if it is less than 3,000, it won't. That means they don't need to don't go for the energy audit and all those things. So as per the designation, uh, as per the act, BC has to fulfill a below criteria. First, they have to appoint the energy managers having prescribed qualifications. That's what the exam they have to clear the they, they clear the paper number one, two, three, and get the certificates through BE. Designated consumer has to get an energy audit conducted by an energy uh, accredited energy auditor every three years. And they have to comply the prescribed norms and standards of energy consumptions for the industrial sectors. They have to, uh, the, the DC are required to adhere to energy efficient consumption norms stipulated frequently. And they have to submit the state of, status of energy consumption information every financial year as the, uh, given the formats by the B. Then there is a certification of EM and EA. A cadre of professionally qualified energy managers and auditors will expertise in policy analysis, 
project management finance and implementation of energy efficiency projects would be developed and that uh, you know be has given the uh, this responsibilities to npc and they are conducting this exams every year energy manager and energy auditor exams now if i come to the qualification of accredited energy auditors and uh, there are some qualifications one is to if any energy auditors who wants to become the accredited energy auditor then he or she is a first certified energy manager so one two three paper and then he has to pass the examinations in energy performance of equipment utility systems conducted by be under under the aegis of npc uh, through npc uh, that's paper number four should have an experience at least five years in energy audit out of which at least three years should be in any energy intensive industries that's what we have defined in dcs has been granted a certification of accreditation by be and the be grant certificate through uh, uh, generating you know uh, accreditation advisory committee which will be considered by the be for the purpose of this certification of accreditation uh, they will assess the energy audit experience and competence of energy auditor who has applied for certification of accredit accreditations on the basis of an oral interview and this accredited energy auditor can go to the firm to the industry uh, to the designated consumer to do the energy audit 